الابناء المتميزين وهيقدم لنا حاله ثانيه متميزه باذن الله زي الحاله اللي قدمتها لنا صبر اتفضل يا احمد شكرا تمام علي لحضرتك ثانك يو بروفيسور علي ثانك يو دكتور تامر فور ذيس انفيتيشن جود داي ايفريبادي Uh, at the end of a very fruitful, uh, two fruitful days full of interesting topics and eminent speakers, I would like to share with you this case. I hope it will be a live presentation, inshallah. Our patient is a 50-year-old female patient coming to us from Sudan, complaining of a slowly growing scalp lesion in the left parietal region that is painless. She traveled all the way from Sudan to Egypt to see a neurosurgeon. And she brought this CT with her, dating back to 2019, showing a left-sided parietal mass 4 by 4 cm with destruction of the skull and skull invasion. You can see the skull, skull destruction and skull invasion, these CTs. On examination, the mass was soft and untender and it was not mobile. But at the end, we are endocrinologists and we are clinicians. We found that the patient has a multinodular goiter with a large left-sided nodule, but the patient was clinically euthyroid. We ordered the lab investigation. The lab investigation were biochemically euthyroid again. We did an ultrasound in our unit with, the, with our device. It showed that the, 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 our patient had a multinodular goiter with a large left-sided nodule, which was solid, hypoechoic, with punctate echogenic pusar. We followed the ACR tirades. The patient has solid nodule with hypoechoic. The patient has wider than tall nodule. The smooth surface with punctate echogenic pusar. This is tirades 5. This is highly suspicious and works a fine needle aspiration. We did a fine needle aspiration for the patient. But remember, the patient came from Sudan all this way to see a neurosurgeon. And we followed her concern. She saw, she, she saw a neurosurgeon. They saw that this is maybe a meningioma and the result of prolonged, uh, long-standing compression of the bone. The bone had eroded and surgical resection was done for this patient, this mass. The pathology revealed that the bony piece, around 9 cm, invaded by soft tissue lesion, around seven centimeters. Microscopically, bone invasion by well-differentiated adenocarcinomatous new growth with mild atibia and the, the mass was highly vascular. Back to the thyroid fine, fine needle aspiration, it came back with a recesta for follicular neoplasm or suspicious for a follicular neoplasm. At this point, we thought that the patient needs to do a thyroidectomy and we sent her for the head and neck department for surgery Though routine evaluation, routine measurement of thyroglobulin for thyroid nodule evaluation is not recommended by the ATA guidelines in 2015, the patient had a markedly elevated thyroglobulin level. CT, head and neck and chest and abdomen was done for the patient, revealed a multinodular goiter with a retrosternal extension, non suspicious neck. Lymph nodes, no pathological chest or, or knee total thyroidectomy. The pathology came back with a left loop nodule around 5 cm, follicular variant papillary thyroid carcinoma that's partially encapsulated with extensive lymphovascular invasion. So, this solves the puzzle. This is a case of thyroid cancer presenting as skull metastasis. Thyroid cancer is the most common in the crime cancer. The incidence has tripled over the, four, uh, the past 40 years, but the mortality remained low as a result of early detection and detection of subclinical cases. Papillary thyroid carcinoma is the most common type of thyroid cancer. Distant metastasis from thyroid cancer occurs in 3 to 20% of the cases with the lung and bones are the most common site Osseous metastasis occurs in 2 to 15% of the cases, with the axial skeleton at the most common site, followed by the pelvic bones, followed by the femur, and then the skull. But when distant metastasis occurs, there is more than 50% reduction in the patient's survival. Being a female, more than 45, degree, 45 years of age, follicular thyroid cancer, and the degree of differentiation are the most predicting factors for occurrence of distant metastasis. 
Skull metastasis from thyroid cancer is relatively rare. 2.5% of the patient and occurs after a long period of follow-up. On the other hand, cases presenting as skull lesions for an occult thyroid cancer are even more rare. There are only few case reports. But skull metastasis from thyroid cancer have special characteristics. They are osteolytic in nature, occurring mainly in the occipital bone, followed by the frontal bone, parietal bone, can occur in the cellular scap, the petrous ridge, in the air sinuses. They mainly present as a painless soft mass. Other symptoms can include cranial nerve dysfunction, increased intracranial pressure, neurological deficit, or headache. Like our patient, lack of access to care leads to advanced stages with more destruction. Being rare, they can be mistaken for more common tumors like meningioma, schwannoma, chondrosarcoma, or baroganglioma. The current therapeutic management of cranial metastasis from thyroid cancer is surgical excision of the tumor and the cranial metastasis, radioactive iodine, external beam radiation, targeted therapy, bisphosphonates, and dinosumab can be used as an alternative when surgery cannot be done. But remember that skull metastasis have poor radioactive iodine response to low remission and poor prognosis. My take home message, clinical examination is the key for every diagnosis. Distant metastasis can occur with papillary thyroid carcinoma. Skull metastasis from thyroid carcinoma is rare. Consider thyroid, thyroid carcinoma metastasis when there's a skull lesion with malignant thyroid nodules. Thank you. Hi, Lahma. Hi, Lahma.